Today, we're going to use Cursor to solve a little problem you get with Flutterflow web apps. If you've ever opened one in the web, uh, it could be that you see a blank screen with just some background color for some time. Depending on your connection and how big your app is, this can take quite some time, leading to a high bounce rate. Be people thinking your page is broken and leaving again. One easy way to make this a little better is to add a loading spinner that shows up before your splash screen shows. We're going to use lots of flow and cursor together again today to achieve just that. Now, let me just show you what I mean. I've got the app up just here and I'll open it up. And there you go. There's a blank screen, quite a bit of time. And then we have the splash screen. It shouldn't take that long. Now, here we are in cursor. I've pulled the latest code. Uh, it's all up to date. If you want to know how to connect Flutter and how to connect Cursor and to sync your code in between, I'm going to link a video just somewhere here on the screen. You can rewatch it and then come back to this place. Now, one thing about Flutter Flow apps, it is that, that they are Flutter apps and Flutter apps have got across platform apps. That means if we look at the, the, the code we get in Cursor, we have our main code based in this library and then we have certain folders for device-specific, backend-specific files. In this case, we have Android, obviously for Android, iOS, and we have web. So if we want to change something about the web version, we will have to do it in web. If you didn't know that, that's no problem. You can always ask cursor. Now, within here, we've got this file index.html, and this is painting your app onto the uh, screen of the web page. Just like any HTML page, it's got two sections. It's got a, or like two main sections, it's got the head and the body section. Now, as you know, in Flutterflow, you can change custom functions, widgets, and actions. The other stuff you can sync. So this again is a bit more like we've got a little play field in here in Cursor and we can quickly create something and put it back in. Now, where can we put it? If you go into your settings and you go to web deployment, you can see there's not that much you can change. One thing you can change is the custom headers. The custom headers is nothing else than this heading section over here. And at the moment, there's not much in here. Uh, and we cannot put anything in the body because it will not carry over to Flutterflow. Okay, so we need to tell Cursor to go ahead and come up with something if something is possible. I mean, I know it is, but we can ask them f and ask uh, Cursor first and then put it into code and put it in here. Now, to do so, I think the easiest way is to uh, use the, uh, the composer and just ask it to do something. So we can press Command I and we can simply tell it what we want. So I have a Flutterflow app or Flutterflow web app. I made it in Flutterflow. Come up a visual. Well, actually, now let's make this easier. Let's just tell what it is. Let's say I have a Flutter app. It was made in Flutter Flow, a visual development tool. I have a problem. When the page loads, there is a blank screen with the background color for some time before the splash screen is showing. I might speed this up later in the edit. I want to add a preloader to reduce bounce. I can only make adjustments to the header section of index.html. Oh, there you go. Use add and then just hack the file. Add a modern loading spinner that shows until my web app is fully loaded. Now, in other videos, we always use the uh, chat. But this time I thought we'd uh, go and take a look at the uh, composer. Okay.
Now, as you can see, it adds something. Okay, so we can see straight away that there is a problem. It added stuff to the body tag. That's not something we can do, but we can always tell it that place remember. Remember, I can only add things to the header. All code must go in there. Now, it'll do it again. Now, let's say, let's accept all. Now, this is not good because it added, it, it's still got stuff in the body. Please go back and clean up the body section. All logic for the loading spinner must be confined to the header section. Now, let's hope it gets it. Yes, there we go. It removed everything. Now, let's accept all of this and try this out. We're not going to try this in here locally because using localhost, the load time is so short, you will not really be able to see it. So we're going to take it back into Clutterflow and use it in there. Now, add this style for the loading spinner, which is great. It's already commented out. And we go down here. You simply copy it. And you go in here, go into custom headers. That's it. And now we simply want to test it and see what happens. Okay. Now we're back inside. And there we go. There's our little loading spin going strong. And it should stay there until we can get a splash screen. And you see, this is what happens when you have a slower connection or if you're in the debug mode now, sort of simulating this. And now someone who's on there knows this is loading. And there you go. There's your little screen. Now, the reason I created in here with my own code is that there are solutions out there where you just enter a tiny, you know, one line script in there that just leads to some repository elsewhere. But you don't have control over this. And what you can do now is you can change all the colors if you want to. So if you go in here and change uh, the colors to something that is closer to what we have in our app, we can simply go and say, okay, I want this, the background to be some other color. So the background is supposed to be this. Okay. And the spinner itself inside is supposed to be this. Then I can do that. And I don't need to rely on someone else changing things. Now I can simply save this and take this and plop it back into a Flutterflow app. Now we've got a color over here and let's put it in here. And there we go. And now I can also go back in here and do the recent, the reload. And we should see different colors for the spinner. There you go. Now, I hope you like this. This is just something that was always bugging me about using a Flutter app as a web app. Last, I'll put the code to the little spinner down below. Feel free to play around with it or just put it straight into your Flutterflow app. Next week, I hope to come up with something a little more complex. Someone suggested to actually show you the whole of how to put together the date range picker. And I might actually do this uh, because we could make it into a multi-part video where you build a native date range picker that looks much nicer than default stuff you have. And then we could also look at how you could bring Google Calendar events or other things as block dates into that uh, date range picker. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you for the next video.